I love fall. We get to look at soil test results, and that is exciting to me on the farm. Okay, most people aren't going to look at this as real exciting, but what? here's here's Why how not? here's how everything gets exciting on our farm. Is it going to make you money or not? And I'll tell you right now, if you know how to read a soil test, you can be way more profitable on the farm. And the first thing you always have to look at on the soil test is soil pH. The reason why is because soil pH affects everything. It affects your soil life. It affects other nutrient availability. It affects so many things. It is tremendously important. So today we want to talk about soil pH. What's the right pH for your farm and your crop? And how are you going to get that pH adjusted if it's out of line, either too high or too low? Here we go again, 2016, very interesting growing season, depending on where you're at across the country. You had certain challenges on your farm and you saw that your field didn't perform the same everywhere. And, and you see, wow, here's a spot that really struggled. Here's a spot where I'm gonna have fantastic yield or I already had fantastic yield. So how do you figure out what to do? Well, the first thing we wanna look at is that soil pH because it influences so many things. First of all, let's talk about nutrient availability. When we've got very high pH soil or very low pH soil, it restricts the availability of certain nutrients. So you may look at your soils and, and look at your field in that spot and say, well, I just need more of this nutrient or more of that nutrient. Well, one good way to do that is get that pH back to the center. When it gets back to a neutral pH, all of a sudden you look at the availability on almost any nutrient out there. When you get to a neutral pH to maybe slightly acidic, your nutrient availability is maximized. All right, but the thing is, not every crop wants a 6.8 pH. 6.8 is kind of what we consider the ideal pH for corn, soybeans, and wheat. We'd like to be in the range of 6.3 to 6.8, somewhere in that range. So anywhere there, yeah, we're great with that. That's almost perfect for those crops. But there are other crops, let's take alfalfa for example, we'd like that pH to be 6, 8, maybe even to 7. Same thing with barley and some other crops. So talk to your agronomist about the crop you're raising and your ideal target for soil pH. But yes, we would like to be somewhere around neutral. A lot of that has to do with nutrient availability, but also it's just what does that crop prefer? All right, so a soil pH, if it's not ideal, it's either gonna be high or low. So let's look at the low side first. There's a pretty easy fix to fixing low pH soils. You just add calcium carbonate or lime. Now, why does lime work? Well, there's a chemical reaction that happens when you've got low pH soil and you add calcium carbonate to it. So in low pH soil, you have an excess of hydrogen. Hydrogen is, is seen as H2 out in a field. Then you add calcium carbonate, that's CaCO3. Now when you add those two things together, you end up with several byproducts. One being H2O, water. So as you do this, the hydrogen is going to pull one of the oxygens off that calcium carbonate molecule and you make water. Then you're left with free calcium for your soil, which is a good thing, and you're left with carbon dioxide, which your plants breathe in. So you've got three positive outcomes from adding lime to a low pH soil. And the big thing there is now your pH can move back up to neutral. All right, but the question is, how much lime do you actually need? So what you're going to see on the soil test is the buffer index or buffer pH, and that's the, the measurement that the soil scientists will use to make your lime recommendation. The lower your pH, obviously the more lime you're gonna need if you wanna get it up to at least 6.3. But in addition to that, the heavier your soil, the more total soil that you actually have, the more holding capacity you have, the more lime it's gonna require. So if you have a light soil, it takes less lime. If you have a heavy soil, it's gonna take more lime. Okay, real quickly, why is your soil pH low? Well, there's a number of different reasons. One could be over application of nitrogen. When you over apply nitrogen, as that nitrogen leaves your soil, it strips some calcium away from your soil profile and that in effect lowers your soil pH. The other thing that we see at times is compaction layers restricting root growth and roots will be excreting organic acids throughout the season, trying to make nutrients come available. So if you've got a compaction zone, chances are your pH is going to be dropping in that little area that your roots can access. All right, let's talk about the high pH soil. Typically what we see there is it's either a drainage issue, poor drainage means you're going to have increased salt levels and eventually you're gonna have higher pH. But the other side of drainage is maybe you have too much drainage, maybe you have erosion. And if you have erosion and your topsoil's gone, well now all of a sudden you're farming subsoil. So the fix to that is build new topsoil. 
How you do that is you reduce your tillage, you plant crops with lots of roots, you use manure and compost, cover crops, those types of things. Okay, if you've got poor drainage out there and you have increased salt levels, what you need to do is get some tile in the ground. If you fix that drainage issue over a long period of time, you will see your salt levels come down, you'll see your soil pH come down. Those are typically the fixes that we talk about for the high pH side. Well, once again, you have to take a look at the crop that you're raising and what its ideal pH is. But for the most part, we're usually talking about a 6.3 to 6.8 pH as ideal. We like to see you get to that in most cases for most crops. If you have a low pH lime, if you have a high pH, build new topsoil or improve your drainage. Another thing you want to fix out in your fields is if you have a weed problem like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? <music>